My name is Marty with Marty's Diesel and today I would like to go over an unboxing of our electronic fuel conversion kit. Uh, basically when you get our kit it's going to come with a box inside of a box. The box that's inside of the box is going to have a blue folder on it. This blue folder should have your information on it as well as the kit that you ordered on it and it will also have your invoice on the inside. The first thing that you normally pull out is going to be two sets of hoses. The shorter set of hose or the shorter hose is going to be connected to a green fitting. This green fitting is larger than the blue fitting that's connected to the much larger length of hose. This length of hose should be 24 feet and this length of hose should be four feet. This hose right here should be enough for a crew cab lawn bed. And you should have at least one to two feet left over when you do the install. Uh, this particular hose itself will be used from the return side of the selector valve all the way forward to the return bottom port on the regulator. You're going to have a section left over. That section that's left over is going to be from your fuel pump assembly to your fuel pump replacement fitting. I'm going to explain that a little bit better here in a minute. This line right here is really short because I want you to take this directly from the selector valve and put it to your fuel pump assembly. I intentionally make it short so that you can't mix these two up. I also intentionally use two different colors so that you can't mix this up. As a general rule of thumb, I also tell people to install the blue fitting first because it's the smaller of the two and you cannot put it on the bigger one. However, the green one, you can put it on the smaller uh, port on the selector valve. So I'll go over a little bit more on that here in a minute. Um, once again, this is just an unboxing video. I'm not gonna get into a lot of the technical aspects of this kit. We're gonna have another video that we're gonna produce shortly that's gonna uh, be a lot more in depth with stuff like that. Uh, the next thing a lot of times uh, you're gonna pull out is going to be some wire loom. This wire loom is long enough for a crew cab lawn bed and it's going to be used uh, to protect the wires going from the fuel pump assembly up to your relay and then maybe from your relay to your battery. More than enough, more than what you need in order to put this kit together. The next thing you might pull out is going to be one half of your wiring harness. This is going to be a resettable circuit breaker. It will have an inline add a fuse and then it will also have a relay. Almost every connection is already made on this kit. In fact, every connection that can be made here at our shop is made. And basically, you're just going to shorten up any one of these wires and then you're going to terminate them yourself. This uh, wire also comes with some extra fittings in the event that you want to use like a different ground bolt than what we use in our videos. Uh, so you got some options right there. Also, it comes with zip ties. These zip ties are going to be used for holding your hoses, holding your wiring harnesses, stuff like that. Uh, my recommendation is to use more zip ties than what we send in the kit, but I at least send you something to get you started. Front of headlines. We didn't used to sell these or didn't used to send these out with the kit. But um, we had a, a series of customers who were just having like some hoses from the factory that were, you know, kind of falling apart. And, and instead of uh, hoping that yours were okay, we just decided to throw them into the kit. So that's going to be the next thing that we pull out is probably going to be your regulator box. In your regulator box, when you open it up, you're going to have a regulator you're going to have some instructions for said regulator. Now, this set of instructions is basically a broad set of instructions. It could be for uh, like a boosted uh, gasoline application. It could be for a naturally aspirated application. It's good information in here, but you don't have to really follow this. If you have questions about your regulator, you can absolutely refer to this, or you can give us a call. It's not a big deal. This instruction manual that comes with the regulator box is not really 100% geared towards our fuel system, but it does have some good information in there for you. You also get a fuel pressure gauge in your regulator box. Now this fuel pressure gauge is branded to be a Marty's diesel gauge, and it's also already set up as well to where anywhere in the green is where you want this needle to read. If it's reading in the red, you either need to adjust it or you need to figure out why it's not reading where it needs to read. It's kind of a nice feature. It's something we've added to the kit in the past year. And I really like the fact that it kind of tells you, you know, where the fuel pressure should be right off the bat. We also send out the fittings that go into the side of the regulator and then in the bottom of the regulator. Uh, basically, these are ready to screw in. You'll notice that these fittings already have O-rings on them. These fittings with the O-rings on them, these are the same type of O-rings that you get in this kit here. 
These are basically extras. They come with the regulator, but instead of me taking them out of the kit, you get them so that if you ever have a leak, you can install these blue O-rings instead of those black ones. Uh, with that being said, this uh, bracket bolts to the back of this regulator, and then we're gonna go over a series of bags that this regulator is going to bolt to in a couple minutes. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of our fuel system. So this is a <clears throat> setup here with uh, short filters. It will already come set up as an outside mount. In the event that you don't want an outside mount or you want to mount this kit somewhere else and this orientation does not satisfy that issue with your truck, all you have to do is take these four bolts out of the top, rotate the pump assembly 180 degrees, and then put the four bolts back in the top of the pump. That will take you from having your inlet from being on this side and your outlet from being on this side, and it'll switch them. So basically, right now, this would be set up as an outside. This would be your fuel tank. This would be your engine. This would be where your short hose with the green connector would go. And then whatever's left over of this line after you cut it would go here, and it's gonna to go to your fuel pump replacement fitting. Most of the kits, or all of the kits currently, are gonna come out with short filters. If we have longer filters, we will offer them to you, or we can send them out on the kit if you would like, but as a general rule of thumb, whatever we have in stock is what we're gonna send out. Now, the reason that I do that is, is because we have an issue with keeping the filters in stock. We buy thousands of these things at a time, and I can't really pan the camera over, but like literally there's probably 10,000 filters and bases sitting right there. I can't keep up with the demand of long, short, long, short. It's actually not even me. It's the supplier that we're direct with, whether it's Fleet Guard, Donaldson, or, you know, Cat even. So long story short, in the event that you don't want the short filters, you can absolutely put long filters on or vice versa. If you get a kit with long filters, you, the next filter change, you can put the short ones on. It does not matter. They both are better than factory filtration. One is not necessarily better than the other. Me personally, I do like the shorter filters because I feel as though they don't hang down as low. And I personally don't wanna see you know the filters hanging down on the truck. But I do have some customers that they want the filters you know hanging down because they wanna show it off. If that's what you want to do, that's fine by me. On this fuel pump assembly, you're also going to have a wiring harness that's already connected to it. Your black should be to black, your red should be to red, and it should already be zip tied to the fuel pump uh, ready to go. This plug right here will take you up here to this relay, okay? Let's just say that you had to replace the fuel pump on this truck, okay, or on this fuel pump assembly. You would take these four bolts out, you could use an adjustable wrench, you would take these two lines off, you could use adjustable wrench, and then you would unplug this electrical connector that's right here on the fuel pump. Now your fuel pump is ready to be worked on on your tailgate, on your workbench, wherever you wanna take it, but not underneath of the truck. So I think it actually is one of the easiest fuel pumps to service in the industry, personally. On the bottom of this bracket, this main bracket, we have our name and our phone number. We have two different mounting locations. And then let's just say you install this on your frame rail and you're not happy with you know, how it's oriented. You're able to actually move these brackets left and right about three inches and up and down about three inches. So you have a lot of flexibility you know, with how you mount this. The next item that's gonna, and the last item that will come out of your box is going to be all of your bags. Now, one of the reasons why I save this for the end is because there's a lot of changes or additions that you can do with your kit, uh, and they're gonna be over here, and that's why I have them out here, and I wanna kinda go through them one by one. So, on a traditional old body style electronic fuel conversion kit from our company, you're going to get a bag that has four bags inside of it. Now, I touched on this a minute ago. We had a couple of extra O-rings um, and a couple of extra like pieces in the regulator box. Well, you get a whole nother bag of other extras. Every electrical connector that you use in the kit, there's an extra of in here. You've got some stainless steel self-tappers that you're gonna use to uh, hold the relay, hold the resettable circuit breaker onto your firewall. You've also got some extra dash six fittings in here. Let's just say you don't like the way that we have something routed have no worries, you've got some fittings in here. You've also got uh, the little black 
dash four uh, VL, um, they're Viber lock connectors. These are for the back of the factory um, fuel rails, fuel lines that go in the, the back of the heads. If you uh, want to change them out, we include them in your extras bag. Not much changes on that for the rest of the kits and no nothing else changes with this particular portion of the kit either. This is going to be your vacuum gauge and I actually have another one back here that's already open. And what I want to do is go over why we're installing a vacuum gauge on one of these trucks. Basically, this is going to go on the inlet side, you know, where that green connector was, the short line that goes from your selector valve to your fuel pump assembly. This vacuum gauge is gonna have green, yellow, and red. If your needle is in green, you're fine. If your needle is in yellow, there might be something going on. If your needle is in red, you have to do something about your fuel system. You can't just install it, see that it's in, your, in red, and then just go drive the truck. You're going to kill the fuel pump. This right here will identify if you have pre-pump issues. Your pre-pump issues, we sent you an email that includes some videos that tell you about pre-pump issues. Please do not ignore this step. And even though this isn't a technical video, this is just an unboxing, I need to stress this. This is one of the most important things that you can do when you buy our kit. These trucks are 20 plus years old at this point. They're very likely to have issues inside the tank. This is the pre-pump gauge. It's also branded as Marty's Diesel. It goes zero to negative 30, and it installs temporarily between your pre-pump filter and your selector valve. It's very easy to install, it's very easy to uninstall, and anytime that you think you have an issue with your truck, you should be installing this gauge, okay? If you hear a funny noise from your fuel pump, install this gauge. If your truck's idling funny, install this gauge. Obviously, you should always look at fuel pressure as well, and it should be in the green, but this gauge right here is one of the things that sets our kit apart from all the other kits on the market, but I think it's probably the most important aspect of our fuel kit to date. Here's a bracket that we have made up that you're going to bolt your regulator to. Uh, once again, unboxing video only, so I'm not going to go through that. We do have another video that basically shows you how to do this with a single tool. It's extremely easy to do, and uh, I like the fact because it has a lot of adjustability. Uh, it comes with the hardware that you need in order to mount the bracket. It also comes with the hardware needed in order to mount the regulator to the bracket. Here is your fuel pump replacement fitting bag. This is another feature that I think sets our kit away from everybody else's on the market. Not only does it retain the factory steel lines in the back of the engine, which means you do not have to remove the turbo in order to install our kit, but also it has a locating bolt hole. So it supports this actual fitting in the valley. So you're not putting excess weight or stress on the fuel lines that go to the back of the heads from the factory on your truck. Remember those little black Viton seals I was talking about earlier, the Viberlocks? Uh, that's what this screws into, like that line assembly, okay? Uh, we also have a freeze plug that comes with this. We have the hardware to mount this. Uh, we also have the little uh, black washers that go on either side of the banjo bolt. That's also included. And then we also have the little brown O-ring uh, that goes on your compressor discharge for your turbo. Now, my theory is, is that if you touch something and it has a gasket or an O-ring, that you replace it. Well, that's why I send you those items. Your items that you have in your truck might be okay. They might still be fine. It doesn't matter, I send them in case you need them, okay? Now, the reason I did that last is because that seems to be where most of the variation uh, happens with our kit. That right there would conclude our standard old body style electronic fuel, con uh, fuel conversion kit. With that being said, we do offer a couple of different options, and one of them is going to be your T4 modification. Let's just say that you have a T4 kit already on your truck, or let's just say that you're installing a T4 kit at the same time as our fuel system. You would definitely wanna ask for this conversion kit because it's going to remove some of the components that are in this bag that you do not need, and what it's going to do is it's going to give you the components that you do need. Like for example, you will get a Y block. That way you can split the feed line in so that you can feed both rear ports on the head. You're gonna get fittings that will screw directly into the head. And it also comes with different styles or adapter fittings so that no matter what T4 kit you're using, you know, the i ray the H2E, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter, the kit will work no matter what. And it also comes with a little adapter fittings uh, so that you can screw them onto there. And once again, you can always refer back to your extras bag in the event that you're not happy maybe with the way that that looks 
uh, your with the routing or whatever uh, in installed in your uh, truck. This is called the T4 modification. It will no longer come with a brown O-ring because you no longer have that for your turbo, and then it will no longer come with those two little black uh, gaskets that come with the banjo bolt uh, because obviously you won't have that anymore either. Now, let's just say that you have a CNC kit or you're wanting to install a CNC kit at the same time as our fuel system. It's a pretty popular kit and we oftentimes have customers that will buy that at the same time as our kit. And when you do that, I highly recommend that you ask for our CNC modification. Basically, in the CNC modification, it gives you the adapter fittings that are required in order to either mount the regulator on the fuel pump assembly or mount the regulator up on like maybe the high pressure oil pump uh, cover, housing, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it basically, it eliminates some of the other fittings out of our kit that you don't need. Like, for example, this fuel pump replacement fitting. You no longer need that because you would use the CNC kit. And the reason that I ask you to order this at the time of your initial order, if you're doing that, is because it's going to save you money, okay? You don't need to get this kit shipped separately. You don't need to, you know, ask to send this back. There, there's none of that. You just order it at the same time. If you buy our kit and then you want this kit afterwards, we can still do that. That's fine. You're just going to have to buy the kit and then have it shipped to you. Quick. All right. Let's just say that you want to get rid of the selector valve because you've got, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a bad selector valve, you've got a bad side tank, you've got a bad rear tank, you know, whatever. You want to run one tank. A couple different things. One, always leave your selector valve at least plugged in even if the fuel side of it's not working because that's going to control your fuel level gauges. With that being said, we also offer a single tank conversion. Now, I don't really have one assembled to show you right now because it's pretty basic. You literally add 10 foot of line to each one of these hose assemblies, and instead of having 90 degree fittings in them, when you get these hose assemblies, they will have straight fittings in them. And they will be the correct size to just click directly onto your sending unit. The extra 10 feet is so that you can do it on a crew cab long bed and the rear tank. Let's just say you're doing a regular cab with just the side tank, you're gonna end up with like an extra 15 foot of push lock. Not a big deal, I send out extra or more than enough to do the longest you know truck bed configuration uh, on the market i talked about long and short filters previously this is uh, an example of the long filters they are not per se like better you know than the short ones i, I kind of touched on that earlier but i just wanted to point out that not only can you you know add different filters to the you know kit you can also purchase these at the same time you know so you can have a spare set of filters for your uh, fuel system if you would like. You just need to ask about it when you're ordering the kit. Very popular item that we sell with our kit is a spare fuel pump. Now, you might think like maybe I'm selling this because I don't have good belief in my fuel pump that's in the uh, kit that we sell. That is incorrect. The reason that I like to offer a spare fuel pump is because one, it's cheap. If you buy it with our kit, right now it's priced at $75 and it would be free shipping. If you were to call back at a later date, it could be anywhere from one to five days of shipping, depending on where you are in the country, and it would be $75, like I said, plus shipping. With that being said, our fuel pumps are genuine Walbro pumps. They also come pre-wired with this little pigtail. If you were to buy this pump from the aftermarket or from somebody else, I don't know if it's a genuine, genuine Walbro pump or not. Also, it's not gonna come plug, plug and play. With that being said, the reason that I like to offer this is because it can prevent downtime. The reason I also like to offer it is because more often than not, you have a pre-pump issue that maybe you don't know about, or maybe it arises six months later. And by the time you put your vacuum gauge on the truck, your vacuum is going to read zero because your fuel pump's not pushing any fuel. You will have to, as a diagnostic, install a new fuel pump and then see what your vacuum gauge number is. Once again, I said at the very, well not at the very beginning, but probably five minutes ago now, that this is one of the most important, or if not the most important attribute of our kit. This right here is why. So I'm not trying to reach into your pocket and get an extra 75 bucks because honestly, it cost me more than $75 to buy and produce this with the plug already on it. I mainly just wanna make sure that you don't experience a breakdown or a long, you know, extended waiting time without your truck. And let's talk about pre-pump issues. 
So I was talking about how if, you know, the needle is not in the green, maybe it's in the yellow or it's in the red. Most of the time, the reason for that is, is the factory strainers inside the tanks on your sending units on your truck have come apart. And all this little black plastic is now getting sucked up into the pickup tube uh, of your sending unit. And keep this in mind too, this fuel pump, okay, while it's still just a fuel pump, just like your factory one is, this one is rated at a much higher horsepower rating. This thing literally can support more than triple what the factory fuel pump can in your truck. So you can guess that this thing's moving more fuel. So it's more likely to then suck stuff up off the bottom of the tank itself. That's why it's really, really important to make sure that these strainers are installed on the bottom of your sending unit inside your tanks. This is a pre-pump kit that we send out and it's $300 currently. And if you buy it at the time of the purchase of the kit, it's free shipping. If you do not, you have to call back later, you just pay the shipping. Now, the reason this kit is $300 is because it comes with two factory screens that go on the bottom of those sending units. It also comes with all of the adapter fittings that you're gonna need, plus the Oedeker clamps that you're gonna need to install into these hoses once you cut them to the proper length. It also includes a Nipix Oedeker clamp uh, tool. That way you can properly crimp these fittings onto the end. It's really not that difficult. You can basically just look at the other ones that we've already done for you, either here or on these hoses over here, and basically you just copy what we did there. It's very, very simple. Now, generally speaking, we're gonna send you one size of line and it's gonna have adapter fittings. Uh, one will be like a five, one will be a six. What you're gonna find out though is that as we run into supply issues that we'll actually you know, possibly be sending you two different size lines so that we don't have to worry about finding the jump size fittings. Either way, it's not going to affect the performance of your truck. It's going to work exactly the same way as what it would if it was you know, 2-6 lines or you know, in this case it's a five and a six. My recommendation is, is that you always install the uh, smaller line first. That way you don't install the bigger one onto the smaller port and then you end up with a fitting that's either stuck or broke. Uh, once again, this is $300 shipped and this is what we call our pre-pump solutions kit. This kit right here is not part of our general old body style electronic fuel conversion kit, but it is another option that we can sell you at the same time. Typically, if you install this and you blow your selector valve out and you have to switch it back and forth while you're doing it, okay, use the, you know, the button on your dash, you need to make sure the selector valve's clear. If the selector valve's clear and you install this kit and you install our standard old body style electronic fuel conversion kit, you're really not gonna run into any kind of fuel pump failures. Almost every single fuel pump failure that I've ever analyzed has come back to a pre-pump issue. Now we have a video that goes into much greater detail on what pre-pump issues are, and this is just an unboxing video. So that's gonna be it for the unboxing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so hopefully you guys learned a lot from this, and if you guys got any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call, send us an email, anything like that. Thank you very much.